President Zelensky is warning that this war has reached a new stage of terror. We are actually just 50 miles from the border with Ukraine, and they are manning this air defense system 24-7 to be ready for anything. Some of the most innocent victims trapped in the crosshairs of the war are those whose lives are just beginning. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis is growing by the hour as millions flee their homes in hopes of escaping the violence. Most people just, all they have is a small suitcase, like a carry-on bag almost, and that's it's their entire belongings that they're bringing with them. an orange? You do? Do you want me to get you one? Godspeed. Good luck. Let's Take go. care. Why do you do this? Um, the human race is one. You didn't human you race is one. Oh my gosh, where did you come from? Katya. Katya. Nice to meet you. You okay? Think about in the face of such evil that you found such kindness. As war inches closer here to Poland, many of the people we saw, they're tired, they're scared. Many of them, they just want to go back home. A bus just arrived just a couple of minutes ago before we came up here. How long have you been traveling? Before 11 days, I, I live in a bar near Kiev. People have been traveling for days from Kharkiv, a mother carrying her baby. Oh my goodness, are you okay? These people are so tired and all they have with them are like two small roller bags and some backpacks. You must be exhausted. Are you so tired? No, what do you So tired. Well, I'm sorry, come inside. There's rest inside. They come to a place like here, a reception area. It's dark now because they're sleeping. For many people, it's the first uh, sleep that they've had in days. Hello. How are you? Also, they're in shock. I mean, these women and their children, they have sort of a, a blank look on their face. Not only because, as, as one woman said to me, this is not supposed to happen in the 21st century, a war like this. How many of your family is here? Uh, my sisters, my grandma, and my nephew. Good luck. Thank you. Are you scared? Mm, I'm so scared. We also just met a family of five. They've been here for several days. Uh, they have two dogs with them. Where will you go next? Well, maybe we trying to immigrate in Canada or USA. Canada or USA? Yeah. My father had a sister in USA. Oh. So that will be how that will help. Where in the United States? In Michigan. Uh, Michigan. Detroit. Detroit. When you ask them that question, what is next for you? They answer with a question. How long will the war last? For many, this is the most difficult journey of their lives. But here they have found open hearts and helping hands. Beyond this gate is actually the border with Ukraine, where we see many of the families who are walking across actually come through this area. All they have is a small suitcase, like a carry-on bag almost, and that's it's their entire belongings that they're bringing with them. Hello. Alona and Katya from Kharkiv told us they traveled by train with three kids with no food, only water. That's a lot of travel. No. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Steve. How old are you? Seven. How did they do on the travel? It was hard, but they're holding on. Yeah. Where will you go? 
ну, в Польщі не дуже орієнтовано. Masha and her five-year-old son Benjamin haven't had a hot meal in days. Is that your toy? Yeah. Well, they have lots of toys here. They have toys and they have food. Do you like oranges? Do you like an orange? Yes. You do? Do you want me to get you one? Yes? How are you doing? Uh, we go. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. That's for her. I'll make another one. Okay. No, only one. It's okay. Sure? Yeah. No, no, we can eat together. Thank you. Do you want a bag? A whole bag? Yeah, do you want a whole bag? Thank you, Bess. Last year I live in Sume with my husband. And yeah, and in Sume. I'm scared and tired. They don't have to look for the helpers. They are everywhere. Hardyal Singh spends his days volunteering. Why do you do this? Uh, you recognize the human race as one. You feel that it's so important to help. And, and humanity is all one, right? That suffering kind of brings all of us together. Wow. There is an outpouring of kindness here. I'm good, but show me what you sure. your... So this is a chicken soup with uh, noodles. Plus hot food. Mm. Thank you. Diapers and shoes. How old is she? And special care for the many animals. Can you show me inside? Yeah, sure. Okay. About how many pets do you think you've treated here? Oh, five, six hundred the last. Six hundred pets. The last, the, the last week, I think. And what are you treating them for? Yeah, the hypothermia. The uh, the pets are freezing cold. The, the pets are freezing cold. We saw citizen soldiers from America and Canada ready to fight in Ukraine. Where are you guys going? We don't want to talk. You don't want to talk. Godspeed. Good luck. But most of those traveling are women and children. We started an information campaign on the border in Ukraine. So on the immigration side, every family who's crossing, we have a poster there to aware them that be careful. Not everyone on the other side or around is a good guy. Second, what really we need to work hard and takes time to build is a referral mechanism because we all know that some victims will fall into the trap. The UN's Mohammed Rafat told us they are increasingly worried about human trafficking. We are preventing any random cars to come and pick people. How dangerous does it get at night? In this site, not very dangerous now because we have a light system all around. It was built by the municipality. And also we have police now working 24 hours. As you can see, there is no still an identification system, so anyone can enter the site. And it's sex trafficking? It's hard to decide now. It's definitely not labor trafficking. Yeah. Very obvious from the attempt, it's old guys trying to pick young girls. So you can assume it's Old guys to... trying to get young girls. Yeah. Have there been arrests for human trafficking? Uh, yes. Here? Yes. Vladimir Putin's invasion is the biggest test for NATO since the Cold War. And not far from where we are now, the U.S. state-of-the-art defense systems in the ready position to deter the Russians. And we got an exclusive up-close look. And, and we're just about 50 miles from Ukraine. Oh, that is correct, yes, ma'am. Here at an airport in eastern Poland, a new major show of American force designed to deter Russian aggression. Two Patriot missile batteries, among the most sophisticated air defense systems on the planet. For security reasons, we've been asked not to name the battery commander or show his face. So what capability does this have? All of these missiles are designed uh, to defeat tactical ballistic missiles, designed to defeat uh, cruise-type missiles, as well as aircraft. Defeat threats by shooting them out of the sky. What is in each of those cylinders? Uh, well, so each of those cylinders contains missiles, uh, Patriot missiles. Again, multiple varieties of those. Uh, loadouts are uh, unique. Uh, I can't go into the specifics of the loadout that we have here, um, but we do have the ability uh, to load a variety of, of missiles onto our, our, our weapon system in order to defeat a variety of threats. And if the missile is intentional or it's just an errant missile, what can this do? 
uh, well, uh, regardless of intentional uh, or, or accidental, uh, the system actually does not have a means of discriminating against those. It identifies threats, and we have the ability of defeating those threats. When did it get here? So these systems have been on ground for about a week. I feel like things are ramping up. Well, so I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of tensions right now, uh, but of course we are just here doing missions that we do very common, uh, which is working with our NATO allies, assuring them and deterring any aggression that we may encounter. Um, so while this circumstance is very unique and tensions are very high, this is very much what this unit does and what we're prepared to do uh, whenever required. Tensions high as the war gets closer to NATO's doorstep. A Russian missile hit a military facility just 15 miles from the Polish border. And local reports say a suspected Russian drone was found in Romania. It's not just the U.S. adding Patriot missiles. Germany and the Netherlands are deploying them too. So some of our NATO allies have similar capabilities. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So Patriot has been integrated into the, uh, the, the NATO community for some time. Um, and, 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 and many of them are, are interested in the capabilities that Patriot can, can provide for, for their militaries as well. Mm -hmm. The airport we visited is also used as a way station for weapons going to Ukraine. We saw what appeared to be a convoy of trucks leaving the airport, heading for the border. The U.S. is bringing in more than just weapons. There are now 100,000 U.S. troops operating in Europe for the first time since 2005, including those at the site of the Patriot batteries. Major General Gregory Brady is in charge of the Army's missile defense systems throughout Europe. We saw two uh, Patriot missile systems today. How would you describe their state of readiness? Well, we always are maintaining a high level of readiness. They are here ready to defend against any type of aerial threats uh, that could threaten NATO territory. This is the first time since 2005 that there have been more than 100,000 U.S. troops in Europe. What does that signal about our posture? Well, our, you know, our deployment here um, is really in support of larger, our, you know, regional security requirements. And that's the top priority uh, for U.S. Army Europe, Africa. And so we reposition units in order to support, you know, our alliance requirements, but it also provides that flexibility in the event that there's an issue uh, that arises out there. Ready for anything uh, so and always on alert. The they just told us we had to go. This Humvee just pulled up and said, it's time to leave. Well, Vitaly Klitsko is the mayor in Kyiv. He's been documenting the damage to his city on his social media pages. City bus just got hit by the rocket. Lives are getting lost. In his previous There's life, the, the mayor, along with his brother, once dominated the heavyweight boxing world. We spoke with him about his latest fight, the fight for his nation's survival. Is your city in the crosshairs under fire? Yeah, it's every night. We listen alarm, bombing alarm, siren during the day, during the night. People spend weeks in underground in bunkers and uh, but uh, this case I talked to the people who uh, was involved the people was so angry and uh, if Russians try to bring the panic to Kyiv instead panic we became huge wave of patriotism because people want to defend his houses Instead of panic, they want to fight, uh, they want to defend the city and his house. Mayor, you have warned that Russians could carry out a chemical attack. Do you see any evidence that that could happen soon? Everything is possible. We see in this war, Russia doesn't have rules. Doesn't have, uh, doesn't have uh, war rules. They kill children, women, civilians. The thousands of people, thousands of civilians already died. And that's why uh, it's possible. It's possible uh, because they have a target, they have a goal with any price to be in Kyiv. That's why I, I hope it's not they use chemical weapons against the civilian population. They, with any price, they want to win.
How much longer can Kyiv defend itself? I'm not ready to give you a clear answer. Long is possible. Long is possible. We don't see another way to move from our city. Never Russians come here. You will defeat the Russians. From every building, from every street, every citizens right now in our city ready to defend our homes. Through the darkness of this war and human suffering, we have also seen the kindness of others. From the moment we got to Poland, we've seen people not just opening their hearts to Ukrainian refugees, but their homes. These two families were complete strangers until two weeks ago. They don't even speak the same language. Ola left behind her husband, her home, her pets and her job in Kharkiv, which has been devastated by Russian air attacks. They left in a hurry in the early morning hours, accidentally only packing summer clothes. I think about all the places that you could end up. How do you feel about being here in this home? She told us she didn't know where they were going or where they'd end up, but they were really happy to be here. Ola, her mother and two daughters ended up in Warsaw and found comfort in the home of Barbara, a 75-year-old Polish woman. And you gave up your bedroom upstairs to sleep on the living room couch. She can sleep here because she's just one and there are four. So they can take like a bigger space. And not, a problem. Not, not a problem. So it says so much about you and other Polish people that they have opened their homes to these refugees. There is many people calling to my mother, uh, asking uh, like their neighbors asking, uh, do you need any help with the food, with the money mm -hmm. for them, with uh, some something, uh, some clothes to, to, to wear or, or other stuff. Little Rima is only five and a half. That's full of Rima's. And just started school here. But the reminders of war at home are evident. Like the sound of an airplane flying above. Is she scared? She's anxious. Mm -hmm. She grips her older sister. Why is she afraid of the airplane? Because in the morning of the 21st February, the airplanes uh, went, were going over the house they lived in. What are you worried about, Rima? I'm worried about her cat and uh, dog. You miss your cat and your dog? I understand I would be too. I think about in the face of such evil that, that you found such kindness. It's a gift. For the younger cat, it's incredibly hard to explain everything that's happened. The uh, older daughter understands everything. Uh, so Ola just <laughs> tries to hide her emotions and uh, not cry. And uh, when she does, it's at night and that's when no one that. Here they are safe and together, hoping to go home but prepared to build a life in this city that has welcomed them with open arms as they are fleeing evil but finding kindness. This is only a short-term solution. Yeah, this is a short-term solution. So everything is in the hand, in the hand of politics. They can do something. Hi, I'm Nora O'Donnell with CBS. Hi, how you doing? Nice to see you. Nice meeting you. I also spoke with the mayor of Warsaw yesterday. I mean, that city alone has taken in more than 300,000 refugees. That means the population of Warsaw is up nearly 20 percent in just two weeks. The mayor saying they can't handle the millions more that are expected to come here into Poland. What worries you most when you talk to the refugees? You know, I talk to them every day and, you know, some of the stories are just overwhelming and incredible, especially about kids being killed, uh, you know, uh, and other kids watching it. 
we try everything we can, you know, to, to create a safe haven for them because we are absolutely certain that, you know, the Ukrainians are also fighting for our own security, and not only of Poland, but of the Western world. And that's why we need a concerted response of the Western world where we organize the conditions for those refugees even better, where we do it as a Western community. The West has to wake up and send a strong signal that they're all welcome, not only in Poland and Romania and Slovakia, but everywhere. Because this is not a permanent solution. No. No, and it's, it, it was never meant to be. I mean, this is a place where people spend a night when in transit or when they want to stay in Warsaw, we give them much better accommodation. But listen, I mean, we have 300,000 refugees in Warsaw. If we have, you know, numbers double that, then we will have to resort to, to, to big reception centers. And then we would need an assistance of, of, of the United Nations and of the European Union, of, of the United States, to actually set them up. Because there are there is experience. You know, different agencies of the UN work like with Lego bricks. They can construct those, those, those reception centers with water, with solutions, with psychologists, and so on and so forth. That's what we probably are going to need pretty soon. Reporting from the border of Poland and Ukraine, I'm Nora O'Donnell.